Hello YouTube, I'm FM225 and today I have a special video for you all. This is going to be a blind reaction to an interview with the creative director of Battalion Wars, Mr. Tancred Dyke Wells. I hope I pronounced that right. So it seems this interview was done by a user named Fan Battalion. He is also the one who sent me this interview. So I'm going to go through it. I'm not going to read like all of the text and stuff. I think people can read on their own. Just pause if you want to read. Uh, but I will be giving my thoughts as I read through it. So here we go. First, we have a message from Tancred. Yes, Battalion Wars is now over 15 years old. That's a little bit crazy. We're still playing. Well, people are still playing. I'm kind of on and off, but people are still playing this game after 15 years and even modding it like crazy. 3D printed models, the fan art, the tournaments, all that cool stuff. Yes. Uh, it seems the people at Nintendo also know about um, our fan creations, so... Hopefully that gets us a third Battalion Wars game. I doubt it. We're probably still like a really small fan base in the grand scheme of things. Alright, so first part is going to be Fan Battalion's questions. So I will... Whoops! Went too fast. <laughs> Spoilers. Okay, here we go. Ah, uh, the Art Academy games. I've never played those. I, <laughs> I didn't think much of them at the time, but maybe it's time I check them out. Uh, and he's even been interviewed by Satoru Iwata. Meeting that man, probably a great honor. And there's a link to the interview if you want to check that out yourself. Oh, they have an indie studio now. Huh. Skeleton Crew, I gotta check that out. Ah uh, yes, everyone who made Battalion Wars, very much talented people. And I hope they still have stellar careers, they deserve it. Now, we know that Battalion Wars is a spin-off of Advance Wars, so I wonder if he's going to mention that. I'm reading this um, as I go. A tactical action game where you could give commands to other units. Well, um, that basically uh, describes every tactical strategy game. You do give commands to other units, but okay. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm joking. Yeah, I, I, I would say Battalion Wars is very ambitious for the time it came in. Uh, so he made Reign of Fire. I guess that's another thing on my list of things to check out. Ah, yes, blending genres. I've tried to blend genres in, like, little projects before. It's, um, more difficult than it seems. Because, like, blending a genre, blending two genres together, there has to be, like, it has to be like you're not playing two separate games, right? Like, you don't want it to just be, like, two different things going on at the same time. Like, if you've ever seen that hybrid randomizer of, like, Super Metroid and Zelda, um, like, you're basically playing two separate games with that hybrid randomizer. This, it, it's not like, like, actually putting two genres together and having actual meaning to it. But they accomplished that with Battalion Wars, I would say. Yeah, that's basically what this is talking about. So, um, I think... He and I see eye to eye here. It's interesting. So, more games being mentioned that um, I'm going to have to check out. Full Spectrum Warrior, Band of Brothers, etc. Ah, he's played Metal Slug. That's a classic. Ah, the kiddie art style, huh? Like, he, like he's saying that Battalion Wars' cartoon art style meant kiddie and it was a tough sell. I can definitely see that. I think comedy and um, cartoony stuff in video games is somehow becoming less appealing in today's time but maybe i'm wrong that's just my perception ah he designed the exylvanians very iconic so here he's saying that many of the level designers coders and so on went on to work on or create high level projects afterward i would really be interested in checking out their work like where they went after battalion wars because it has been 15 years so you know I'd be very interested in looking what they're up to these days. So we'll probably have to do some research on that front. Like, I did look up a couple of the voice actors, and, uh... You know, they are still working in the industry and stuff, so that's cool. Yes, I can definitely imagine Battalion Wars being a very big project. Because there's so much that you have to do. I've worked on some games myself, and I... <laughs> Some, sometimes I get in over my head a little bit. So question one is just how did the idea of the Battalion Wars universe come about? This is not very widely known, but Battalion Wars actually began life as an original concept called Versus. This means war. <laughs> well, that's very uh, 
that's a very basic title for it. I I think some of us in the fan community knew about it being called Versus at first, because we some people did do a lot of digging. So he came up with the idea of an action game where you could issue commands to other units and where you also had the ability to take direct control at any time. <laughs> that was definitely a crazy proposal. You know, I really don't think there's any game out there exactly like Battalion Wars. I mean, there's definitely, like, RTS and um, shooters and stuff, but nothing that matches the exact feel of Battalion Wars, so that's very interesting to think about. So here we have something very interesting, in my opinion. Question two is, do you remember any idea very different from what we know from Battalion Wars? And the first thing he brings up is that the original concept was just called Versus, and that came back in Battalion Wars 2 because the Japanese title of the game is Totsugeki Famicom Wars Versus. Hope I pronounced that right. And uh, that's very interesting that the Japanese version threw in a shout-out to the original concept of the game. Uh, unless that's not the intention, it's just a coincidence, but it's still funny. So he also mentions that the original concept was about undead ghosts of war coming back from the grave and stuff. Uh, basically an anti-war war game. And that's an interesting thing, because there are a lot of war games out there that are surprisingly anti-war. It's really interesting. Um, if Metal Gear counts as a war game, that's definitely anti-war. And also, this concept of humans versus undead soldiers, that comes back in Battalion Wars. Maybe not in the way he was thinking originally, but uh, undead soldiers coming back from the grave. That's basically the Iron Legion, and maybe Exylvania too, if they're all vampires, but... Uh, they all go out in the sunlight and don't expire instantly, so probably not exactly vampires. <laughs> and we have some concept art here as well. So it's interesting that the original engine was actually made for PS2 and Xbox. And it also mentions here that the original working title for the game was Advance Wars Under Fire, so this is definitely Advance Wars related. And he's saying here that the commanding worked more like Pikmin, which is a game I unfortunately haven't played. I should probably rectify that soon. So many games I need to play, but I don't have all the time in the world anymore. <laughs> so the artwork and the environment of the demo at this time actually predated the game's association with the Advance Wars series. Okay, that's actually interesting. This was not intended to be an Advance Wars spinoff at first at all. That's actually really interesting. Once we partnered with Nintendo to develop the project and became associated with the Advance Wars series. And this is talking about the title of the game. Yes, they wanted to make the game more distinct from Advance Wars because it's it's a spin-off technically. Well, now that we know that it wasn't originally associated with Advance Wars, maybe calling it a spin-off is not the uh, most accurate thing to do. But it is attached to Advance Wars through the Famicom Wars title in Japan. So... And they came up with uh, the name Battalion Wars later. That's interesting. Came about after a long deliberation and derived, as I recall, from a suggestion from our American producer, Brett Gow of NOA, who had a brother in a striker battalion in Iraq. Wow. That is really cool, actually. It explains, like, there are, like, dozens of... In Battalion Wars, there are dozens of little nods to, like, real-world wars and events and stuff. So that's probably where that started, very interesting. So question three is, what do you think makes Battalion Wars a unique game, and what do you think are its greatest virtues? Uh, it's really that we were foolish enough to try to hybridize genres. <laughs> okay, that's a funny thing to open up with. A cursed game design problem to solve. Well, you broke the curse because Battalion Wars is a great game. <laughs> But the great thing, I think, was player empowerment. You just have so much freedom and control in the Battalion Wars games. Yes, you can take out bombers with rifles. <laughs> that is uh, that that is something you can do. So question four is, what do you like to do the most or what do you enjoy the most as a developer of Battalion Wars? One of the artists on Battalion Wars accused him of always wanting to make the whole game himself. Uh, you know what, I feel that because I've developed games too and recently I decided to write my own music for games instead of like just taking stock music. I really do want to do everything in my games myself. Art, music, coding, and... But if you ask me when you're a director, working with your staff very closely is important to putting out the exact product you want to see. So it's uh, kind of a blessing in that sense, I suppose. 
So question five, we see that in the first game of the saga there are five nations. When the second part began to be made, were more nations thought, or just Anglo Isles? So according to this, an Indian-style faction was one option, but they didn't want to, like, have the game turn into a kind of race war overtone thing, and I understand that totally. I mean, you're already, like, um, you're already kind of walking a thin line when you've got the Western Frontier and the Tundran Territories. It's obvious who those are supposed to be based on. Okay, so according to this, Nintendo felt concerned that the Anglo Isles wouldn't be much different to the Western Frontier. Uh, I'm gonna call BS on that right now, Nintendo. <laughs> That's nuts. They also looked at maybe doing a French-style faction. Oh, that would have... <laughs> that would have got some people I know interested. Uh, I did not know this. The... According to him, the copper kettle styling of the Anglo Isles units is meant to refer to traditional tea urns that were a feature of the British workplace during wartime. That's very interesting. So, uh, looking at this image, I can definitely see the connection to the Anglo Isles. That gold color and everything. Question six What is your favorite nation? It's the Exylvanians! Oh, yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> the Exylvanians are the greatest villains ever. Dave Swan designed the Exylvania COs, and I'm still most fond of those characters. I agree. It is a crime that Ingrid was killed off in Battalion Wars 1. Question 7. Who is your favorite character? Kaiser Vlad. Oh, yeah. Wolf Collar did the character perfectly, if you ask me. Who also appears in Raiders of the Lost Ark, yes. And I also know that Wolf Collar was in the German dub of Metal Gear Solid, and he also did the German dub for a Kirby game, if you can believe it. So that was fun to find out. It's always fun to take one actor and check out what else they are in, because oftentimes there's something very surprising. And here we have some Vlad uh, character artwork. I'm also going to be looking at some concept art later. I've got a little folder. I haven't seen it yet. Do you have a favorite campaign, mission, or moment from the game? And he answers with Titans of Tundra. And he also refers to it as the Iron Eight, either because he didn't know the um, mission name originally, but I also think that in the internal files for Battalion Wars, the mission is called the Iron Eight. But either way, um, I agree with him. This mission is really great. You can go in just about any direction you want, uh, the mission can be played in different ways because the targets are scattered all around the map and you can take them in any uh, order you want to. So I agree. Titans of Tundra, great mission. So according to him, they definitely overhauled their systems for Battalion Wars 2. And of course, there was the online multiplayer as well. That was a lot to take on, I imagine. Battalion Wars 2 also looks a lot nicer graphically. So that was definitely, um, that was definitely a plus to uh, reworking all of that stuff. It came out much, much nicer looking. So question 10 is about the concept of multiplayer for Battalion Wars 1, which is very interesting. Um, he mentions that they had the split screen up and running, but it was very difficult to control everything with like all of the screen real estate being divided like that. And I can definitely see that. If you have ever seen a video of Battalion Wars 2's co-op mode uh, modified to be booted in single player then it has this really weird split screen effect which it's it's very glitchy but also with a screen split like that i can imagine it being very very difficult to control everything and like see where you're going and all of that um, probably just not viable so when online became available uh, they went with uh, online only for multiplayer for battalion wars 2 and it works out in my opinion so question 11 is, what was the biggest obstacle in making any aspect of the game? And he answers, the sheer quantity of units on such an early console was a little nuts. Hmm. That's interesting because, as you know, I've actually modified one of the Battalion Wars 2 missions to have 100 units going at once. <laughs> so, um... So question 12 is about Empress Leiko and how she seems to have magical powers because she does that thing with the teapot in one scene. And, uh, ah, so the Iron Legion and the Solar Empire and all of that were paying homage to a certain fantasy trilogy. I wonder which one it was. <laughs> Probably very easy to figure that one out on your own. So question 13 is about voice actors, and according to this, many of the actors physically resembled the characters they were playing. 
Okay, now I gotta see some pictures of them in real life. I wanna meet the real life Empress Laco. <laughs> and uh, according to this, he was most in awe of Wolf Collar. I agree. Uh, Vlad and Farrokh, amazing uh, acting all around. So question 14 is about the selection of voice actors and actresses. I can't really imagine him like mentioning any names for people who auditioned but didn't end up getting the role. So let's see here. It was pretty easy to pick the people who just seemed to hit the right tone for each character. General Herman was just an immediate hit, for example. Agreed. I can't imagine anyone other than Stefan Ashton Frank playing him, and he had quite a Herman vibe in person. <laughs> so question 15 is about the soundtrack. It's a very distinct soundtrack, in my opinion. Lots of uh, drums and marching noises. This was one of those aspects of the game which just flowed really easily with no struggle from my point of view. Okay. So they very much knew what they wanted from the soundtrack, and they were able to do that. That's pretty cool. Nick went on to do great work in the Arkham series of Batman games, and Justin is just a general industry legend. Why have I never heard of him? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I just... I, I listen to chip tunes mostly, so... So he points out that the main intro music from the original Battlefield 1942 was one reference point, so I will probably have to listen to that later. And it seems his favorite song is the Mission Select music. Uh, no wonder is it, it was in both games. Question 16. Do you remember any funny or curious stories about the development of Battalion Wars? This is kind of impossible to answer because everything was silly and crazy. <laughs> no, I'm joking, of course. So question 17 is, is Tancred still in contact with his old colleagues? And he says pretty much all of them. That's pretty cool. I'd imagine they are working on something new now, in fact. So yes, it seems that uh, many of the developers from Battalion Wars are still in the industry and still working on some high-profile stuff. Um, not that I've heard of much of it, unfortunately, but it seems I will have a lot of things to check out now. Question 18. As the years passed after the release of Battalion Wars 2, are you surprised that there is an entire community alive for this series in 2022? Well, honestly, he should not be surprised. It's an excellent game series. Question 19. Do you closely follow content made by Battalion Wars fans such as mods, projects, guides, etc.? Um, and he says, not really. But he does know about the Discord and how big it is. Well, that's humbling, honestly. That Discord really is bigger than I imagined it would be. You know, one wonders if he's seen that 100-man melee thing I made. I really ought to uh, show it to him, maybe, but that would probably be too much fanboying. Question 20. I think many fans, myself included, are wondering the following. Is it possible that we will see a Battalion Wars 3? Why did you ask him that? Of course it's not going to happen. <laughs> so yes, of course there was a Battalion Wars 3 proposal at the time. In fact, that was for the Wii U, and I still have the pitch deck somewhere. Keep asking Nintendo if you want to see it happen. Well, I guess we don't have any other choice now. Question 21, in the hypothetical situation that a Battalion Wars 3 is made, would there be any kind of survey or compilation of ideas from the fan community? And the answer is, for sure. So keep asking for that recon racing mode. <laughs> so question 22 is, we know that there are many video games that include an Easter egg. Did Battalion Wars include an Easter egg that no one has discovered yet? Um, it's been 15 years, so I would be very much amazed if an easter egg hasn't been discovered yet. So he doesn't really mention any easter eggs, but he does mention a scene that potentially got cut from the final game. Um, water shoot scene with grunts going down a waterfall in a cavern. I don't really remember anything like that from Battalion Wars. There might be something kinda like that, but not exactly. But if that scene still exists on a file somewhere and it was just cut from the final game, it would be interesting to take a look at it. Modders could probably get it working again. Final question. Oh, final question already. I'm only 17 pages in. Uh, final question. When you played the game, were there any missions you got stuck on? <laughs> um, if he got stuck on a mission, I'd imagine that would be a problem for, like, testing and stuff. Ah, uh, so there are more questions. Okay. Fan community questions. Do you remember what program was used for the development of Battalion Wars? Well... They were obviously using Lua scripting. I've looked at the game files, so I know this. In-house game engine and editing tools. Okay, so it was probably all in-house. We would literally paint the height map to create hills, valleys, etc. Um, based on what I know from modding the height maps, 
uh, that definitely sounds like what you have to do in order to mod the height maps if you want to make a mod. Question two, having the actor Wolf Collar, was there a line in the script that made reference to one of his movies? And the answer is, I'm afraid not, though you may notice many other lines in the cinematics that pay homage to other famous war movies or anti-war movies. Yes, this is definitely something that I have actually considered making a video about. There are so many lines, mission names, even scenes that reference real-world wars, war movies. That would be very interesting to look at. I'm actually feeling inspired now. All right, so question three is, did you try to add more players to multiplayer? And I know where this question is coming from because in the game files, there are references to potential four player modes. And the answer is, I believe so, yes. We were up against the limits of the tech at the time, I think. Question four is, have you played the online mode? And no brainer, you guys, of course he did. He had to have tested it, right? Question five is, in the online mode, are there things or missions that you wanted to implement, but in the end you didn't? And the answer is yes, split screen. And as I mentioned before, uh, it is possible to have a sort of split screen effect, so it looks like that was in progress, but didn't end up happening in the end. And moving on to question six, in the hypothetical case of Battalion Wars 3, would more nations be added? And it looks like the answer is maybe. Um, you don't really need that many nations when you have Exylvania and the Western Frontier. That's really all you need. So... So question seven is, while making Battalion Wars 2, were you already thinking about ideas for Battalion Wars 3? I would imagine that there was a lot of ideas that they couldn't implement in 2 that they would have in a potential third game. And it seems this answer is uh, very much giving off that same vibe. So question eight is technically not a question because there's no question mark, but I think it's talking about the potential for other games like Battalion Wars that weren't connected to Advance Wars or Nintendo or anything. And we know that there were a couple of potential uh, games that were like Battalion Wars, because there was that Lord of the Rings thing, there was this thing called Night Wars. We know about that, kind of, but um, I don't think that really came to fruition. I think the Lord of the Rings game did come out. I'm not sure. I'll verify it on GameFAQs later, I guess. Question 9. There are many fans in love with Exylvania's aesthetics. Is there a possibility that a Exylvania campaign can be seen? Was that possibility raised in Battalion Wars 2? Uh, and according to him, they more or less went about that by creating the Iron Legion campaign. So yes, I'll reiterate it again. Pay attention to what Cindercone is doing with their games at the moment. Question 10. Were any nations thought to be allies of Exylvania? And the answer is no, they're the bad guys. <laughs> Straight and to the point. I like it. So question 11 is, was there any content that was not added to the final version of the game? If you look at the game files, there are definitely remnants of missions that were cut from the final release. So um, those can be looked at. So question 12 is about changes to particular units between the two games, and it's asking why those changes, and he says he can't recall the specifics of those particular units, but he also mentions that it was possible to load and unload troops into individual turrets on a vehicle, the same way you could with a machine gun nest, and that is actually something that you can re-enable through modding in Battalion Wars 2. Like, you can make it so you can jump into a vehicle and start driving it around. But according to him, it was even more complicated than that. You could also lock on to individual nodes and give orders to put the troops into those turrets. Very, very interesting. And he also mentions that transporters worked the same way. I don't really know what the point of being able to load and unload units from a T-copter would be in Battalion Wars. It's not the same as Advance Wars, where it's obvious what the use of it would be. But... It's also worth mentioning that there is a cut armored personnel carrier sprite in Battalion Wars 1. I can't say the word carrier for some reason. It's so weird. But it was just way too fiddly and time-consuming in the context of an action game to be loading and unloading individual units. So sadly, we opted to simplify that and transport vehicles became more of a way of delivering new units to the player. All right, so that all makes sense, and I think it was a change for the good, honestly. So question 13 is a lore question asking if there were any conflicts between Lord Ferox's death and the events of Battalion Wars 1, and um, there's really no answer to that, to that, I think, but it's pretty reasonable to expect that conflict was never far away in the Battalion Wars universe, and that makes sense to me. That's his words. 
So question 14 is about Brigadier Betty and how she changed between the two games. Um, in the original Battalion Wars, she definitely looks and acts like a cheerleader, and that plays into the Western Frontier treating war like a sport. Like, you can definitely see this if you read into their dialogue and stuff. But according to him, it seemed a bit demeaning to depict her with that archetype, so we leaned more into making her a soldier for the second version. And that makes sense, in my opinion. Like... Brigadier Betty's voice in Battalion Wars 1, it eventually got super annoying hearing it over and over again, like after playing the missions over and over. So that makes sense. Probably a good change in my opinion. So question 15 is about anything that he would have changed about Battalion Wars looking back on it now, and he mentions again that he would have liked to make that third edition, just because there were some interesting ideas for evolving the gameplay experience. But um, it seems he is happy with um, being able to fully realize the intended vision of the first two games anyways. And I can totally understand that, but I would still like to see a third game myself. Question 16. About the Battalion Wars fictional universe, are the soldiers clones and are... <laughs> okay. So question 16 is asking if the soldiers are just clones or are they individual people. <laughs> That's a very interesting thing to ask. Kind of a lore -ish question. And he answers with, they're certainly not unemotional or robotic. Um, that should have been clear based on the little things they say to each other when you're fighting. So, um, that was kind of a weird question, I gotta say. Question 17. What games, movies, series were you based on to create Battalion Wars? Okay, somebody should really check the grammar of these questions, I gotta say. To answer that, however, it seems that the biggest influences were Metal Slug, Advance Wars, and Battlefield 1942. So question 18 is about units that were conceived but never implemented, and he actually answers with something interesting. Grunts used to carry grenades, but they found that it just worked better for every unit to have a simple single function, and that makes a lot of sense. But he also mentions that in addition to the grenade vets evolving into the mortar vets, uh, there were also medics in early versions of the game. That would have been interesting, but I think that would have probably been overpowered because anytime the fighting stops you could just heal up all of your grunts and that would have been like um what would be the point of trying to inflict damage right it's like regenerating health in an fps uh this question goes on for a little however it just felt over complex to command them to heal your troops health packs felt like a better way of handling that requirement without the player having to micromanage yes that makes a lot of sense and this interview ends with a message from Fan Battalion, and then we have the full credits of the Battalion Wars games. Um, th that's probably too small for anybody to read, but you can look up the credits in the actual games anyways. And it seems Tancred shared a few images. So we'll look at those in higher quality. Versus, this means war, with very early Western Frontier and Exylvanian units. Very nice. We have some concept art of units. That is a weird looking... What is that supposed to be? A drone? Is this like a hover car on the left here? Uh, these are very interesting potential units. Like this this green thing on the right here is probably like an early gunship or something. And we have a... That's probably a recon, but it looks like kind of a merged recon tank thing. A um, heavy recon maybe? With like maybe a grenade or something? I don't know. And on the right, we have the cut APC, as I mentioned. So we have some Advance Wars under fire concept art. There is the Vlad art that we saw earlier. We have the Western Frontier grunts, and we have the art for Exylvanian tanks. Is that how you spell Exylvania in the final version? I don't think that S was supposed to be there. Like, they probably changed the spelling of Exylvania, which is interesting. So we have some grunt and veteran concept art, and then I think screenshots of a model. Interesting. More grunts and veterans, and the characters from the original. Oh, so some of these characters are interesting. If this is all Battalion Wars 1 stuff, then this design for Betty here is interesting because that looks much closer to her Battalion Wars 2 appearance. And I think we have two designs for Ingrid here, because... In the one on the right, she looks she's dressed more like um, Ubel. But in the final version, they might have gone with a kind of a mixture of the two designs. Like I'm going off the um, 
I'm going off the assumption that this is Battalion Wars 1 concept art. So Nelly definitely looked a little different. She doesn't have the hat. Um, Nova seems mostly unchanged. Vlad seems mostly unchanged. But this character in the center right next to Vlad, that's interesting. I think that might be an early design for Nelly. Because it definitely looks Russian, so it's obviously going to be Tundran. And, again, if this is Battalion Wars 1 concept art, then it seems that uh, Akira was considered for Battalion Wars 1, and so was Ferok. But in the end, we just got Possessed Ingrid. I don't know if Possessed Ingrid is supposed to be Ferok. Maybe she doesn't really act like Ferok when possessed. Actually, Ingrid's possession is really weird if you think about it. So for Battalion Wars 2, we have Submarine art. And that's all of it. So that is all for this interview. And uh, now I'm going to look at concept art. So it looks like we saw all of the concept art in that PDF already, but I will uh, go through these images to get a closer look at them. So here we have evilflamer.jpg, which um, appears to be a very early incarnation of the flame veteran, or I guess the acid gas veteran, uh, back when it was about undead soldiers and stuff. So this definitely looks like a ghost soldier of some kind. And we have evilgas.jpg, which is probably the true acid gas veteran. And we have the evilmg.jpg, which is the uh, probably just a grunt. And this is very interesting. It kind of looks like a Tundran bomber, but it has elements that make it look like a dragon that's dropping bombs. That's really cool. I have no idea what this is supposed to be, but... It's probably from a time when the enemy designs were going to be a lot more demonic. So this is definitely very monstrous looking. Pretty cool. And this is the... I don't know what to call it except for the shark zeppelin ship thing. It's so cool, actually. Like... <laughs> like, look at it. I don't know what to say. And here we have the... Battle Station. Uh, so the file name is actually goodbattlestation.jpg. So um, I was I initially thought this was an APC, but it might just be an early Battle Station. Really interesting. And this is the good APC. So this is the actual design for the early APC. Weird. I got it completely wrong. And this this, however, is a gunship. Like I thought it was. It's a weird looking gunship, though. It's like it came out of a Mega Man X game. And this is a hovercraft, as I mentioned. They might have considered hovercrafts at some point. So that's interesting. And that's all of the images. So that's going to conclude this video. Um, thank you, Fan Battalion, for reaching out to the developer and doing this interview. That was actually very interesting to look at and talk about. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to make any more Battalion Wars content. I'm going to eventually run dry of it. But one thing's for certain, it's great that we still have a Battalion Wars community and everything, even 15 years after the game was created. So, um, that'll do it for this video, and uh, I'll see you for whatever Battalion Wars content I decide to make next.